Hello and welcome to Time to Get Fit. I'm your host, John Pearlstone, trainer and fitness consultant, who for the last seven years has lived the life totally dedicated to timing. And in 2014, I actually put together as part of my plan called the Eat Fitness Plan, a couple of books that help explain all the details of timing and give you the science backup for it. Uh, one is called It's Not What You Eat, It's When You Eat It, focused on eating timing. And then the new book I put together is called Go Easy Fitness, which talks about all the revolutionary developments that I've been able to come up with and execute in the area of exercise timing. So that built my plan called the Eating and Exercise Timing Fitness Plan. And this episode, we're going to talk about exercise timing in a very interesting and unique way. We're going to bring some of the most current science to you and let you take a new look at what exercise really means and what it might be all about for you that you can use in your life. So let's take a look at the basic question of this particular show. And that is, can your ability to do one simple exercise predict your death? That's the question. Can your ability to do one simple exercise predict your death? There is a large and growing scientific community that says, yes, it can. So we're going to take a look at an exercise routine that the Go Easy Fitness book spells out for you, and it's called the Live Longer Routine that helps you get better at this particular exercise. So let's dig into it, show you a little bit about it, show you some examples, and while we're going through it, give you some specifics on how to make sure that it can fit your lifestyle and change some of your old habits about starting exercise and stopping or risking getting injured, things of that nature. So i got to use... A little prompter here. This is the study and you can see that it was published in Preventive Cardiology uh, just last year and it was done out of Brazil, a, a group out of Brazil and the specifics of the study are these. That included 2,000 patients aged 51 to 80 and they did a particular exercise called the sitting rising test. And you may have heard of this. This has been on all the national news. Uh, I just saw a news report on it literally today from my original hometown in St. Louis. So it's getting out there. And the uh, effects of the study were quite interesting because what it said, if you take a look at the details, it said that they use a 10-point scoring system for trying this exercise. And if you were less, of greater than eight points, you had a twice as high risk of death. I'm sorry, that should say less than eight points. You were twice as high risk of death in the next six years. Again, for the group over 51 to 80 that they followed. And each point, this is the better, that was the bad news. Here's the good news. For each point, you can increase your score through practice and other exercise that will get you in better fitness levels. You can have a 21% decrease in all-cause mortality. So what is this amazing exercise that can literally predict your death? Well, let's take a look at it, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit, then we're going to do it. Okay, this is the exercise, the sitting rising test. And you can see it is what it says it is. You'll stand, you'll cross your feet over, you'll try to sit, I believe it's crisscross applesauce, the way the kids call it now. And then you will pause and then try to stand up without using your hands to help you. And there's a point system that you probably, I don't know if we can get close enough to see that, but you don't really need to see all the details, just get the idea. If you put a hand down, you take a point off. If you wobble, you take a point off. If you have to put your knee down, you take a point off. And then you come up with your score. And so some of you are watching, maybe some of you have seen it on the news programs. The reactions are amazing and interesting when people see this. Most are very skeptical. How could one move indicate if I'm going to be dying or not in the next six years? Well, I think you're missing the point. In other words, that may be what the scientific study showed. But what they're really saying is that balance is the key to long-term health. And the more things you do to improve, think of all the muscle groups, all the mental strength, all the different facets of your body that are involved with balance. It's so complicated. The more you can maintain and improve your balance, the better health you're in. It really is that simple. And I think that's what that study proved. And I'll give you this takeaway from it irrelevant of what the mortality statistics are, which I think you should pay attention to. Some people think it's a joke because maybe they have bad knees from football or a bad back or whatever, so they don't want it to be true. But rather than look at it cynically like that, a better way to look at it is, hey, whatever improvement I can get towards that ability 
is going to give me a better quality of life. And I think that's the message. I'm not, I'm not in the business of predicting when people are going to die. Okay? We had a whole discussion about that in our prior show about the soda tax. People saying it's causing people all kinds of health problems are going to die sooner. There's no evidence of that. And this exercise, I don't know what kind of evidence we may have that this is going to offer you a longer life or not. But I do know it will offer you a better quality of life. So you'll want to practice it and learn it. Um, so we're going to do a little routine. And we're going to show you how it works. And again, it's called the Live Longer Routine, part of Go Easy Fitness. It's not a metabolic exercise per se, but I hope you've seen it can have a huge impact on your health and quality of life. So of course you want to take advantage of it. Um, first, we're going to start with our one minute stretch. And I'll just kind of highlight that because I want people to know how it works. And that is, I'll stand sideways so you can see, it's a lunge, lunge, squat. That's all it is. So you're going to put one foot out on the lunge and put your hand up, the other opposite hand up to get a good hip stretch. And some of you are already saying, I can't do that. Well, then you do this. You do what you can do. And that's really the message I'm trying to send, which is if you're going to do any sort of exercise routine, you must adapt it to your current fitness level. Don't try to do things you're not capable of doing. Just because you might be able to finagle it and get it done once doesn't mean you have that level of fitness. If you start here, move here, move here, then someday you can get to here. Or maybe you can't, but you'll get as far as you can, and that will improve your fitness without risking injury, which is what it's all about. So let's get the other foot extended. I'm sorry, this other foot. Get the other foot extended, get that stretch in, and then we're going to do a quick squat, okay, right here. Again, if you have bad knees, you don't want to risk anything, you just go here. And then you assess and say, well, we have to do a few arm circles. Okay, we do front arm circles, we do back arm circles. We're getting all the big muscle groups loose. And this is the only stretch I do. Despite doing very intense exercise, within a minute, I'm usually ready to go. A couple of jumps. If you can't jump, just bounce. If you can't bounce, just shake. You just pick the level you can handle. And that's our stretch. So now we're ready to get into this routine. OK? Um, the first thing to note about this routine is it is low intensity. It's a low intensity routine. You do not want to go hard, and you certainly don't want to push yourself past your current limits. You're trying to improve your balance. You're trying to improve your flexibility. So you want to take it slow and do what you can do and do it consistently, and the improvement will come over time, which is the way all good improvement should come, because you do it without risking injury, which is the basis of Go Easy Fitness. We go easy. We let time take care of improvement. So what we're going to do is we're going to start. This is the complete menu of what we do with this particular routine. It's a combination of two moves. We're going to do the sitting rising test. And we've got that set up with four of them, two with each foot in front. And then we're going to do what's called the eat gold standard move, which also, as you'll see, I won't have time to explain it all tonight, but the eat gold standard move, if you can do it, you can guarantee you're more fit. You can guarantee you'll absorb a fall better. You'll recover faster. That's why you want to get good at this move. If you can't even get close to doing it, I'm going to show you some progressions to let you get benefit from it anyway. OK, so let's do this routine. Let's start from the beginning. If we've got a beginner, OK, we want to bring a chair out. You know, I've got people who have said, I can't do that. I'll kill myself. And it's like, well, you shouldn't do it then. It's clear, OK? So in the perfect world, a beginner would take a chair, cross their leg, and just simply sit down. Make sure I'm balanced over the chair. I've done that before. Just kind of fall over. Then you stand back up. OK? Sit down, stand back up. Some of you are like, I can't cross my feet like that. I'm not stable. Do not risk injury, especially if you're doing this on your own. You go ahead and start with your feet straight in front of you. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a great starting point. You're still getting the benefit of certain core muscles, certain balance. You can put your hands out, whatever's comfortable for you. They're just saying you need the hip strength and flexibility to be able to do this move. So that would be a beginner level of the sitting rising test. Okay. If we want to go to an intermediate level, then we would remove our chair, and we would take some sort of stair or box, and we would do the exact same thing. So we would cross. And I've got a stair behind me now, so I'm simply going to sit down, OK? Make sure I'm balanced, pause, stand back up, OK? And then it says to do two with each foot, stand back up, OK? 
If you're advanced, and I am pleased to embarrass myself on TV with this one because I'm no expert at this particular exercise. I just learned it this year myself, but I do, I am improving. I do the best I can. Okay, and this one you're going to basically go to the floor and see how you control it. So you're going to come down, tighten your core, keep balanced. Okay, sit, sit down. I don't have the strength to come up from the ground. It's that simple. So I work on trying to find the best path for the least amount of point deductions. So I can usually put one hand back here and make it back up. And so I get a nine. It's still good. I'm pretty happy with it. Certainly better than when I started. So that's how you would do that particular move. Now let's talk about the eat gold standard move. All right, that one, I'm going to show you the advanced one first so you can show, so you can take a look and say, if I could do that, what does that say about my fitness level? What does it tell me about so many different areas of my health? And basically, you would start with your knees slightly bent, and you're going to come back into kind of a backward roll, and you're going to put your feet over your head. Okay? Bonus if you can snap up like that. Thanks, Mom, for the acrobatics lessons as a kid, so I learned how to snap up like that. But that's the move. One more time. You're going to come down, roll backwards, feet over the head, back up, and drop your mic. OK? If you have a mic, hopefully you won't drop it. Anyway, that is the Eat Gold Standard move. So we want to learn how to do that. And some of you are turning the channel right now, saying there's not a chance in hell I'm doing that move. And that's OK. I don't want you to get hurt. I thought that was very clear. We never risk injury. So we'll bring our trusty chair back out. And now we will do the actual beginner workout to show you how this works. It says four SRTs, standing, sitting rising test, two with each foot in front, then two gold standard moves, 30 seconds slow moving recovery. Let's do one of those and show you how it works. So for a beginner, absolute beginner. Okay, you're not even going to cross your legs. You're just going to drop down, one, up, two, up, three, up, and four, up. Got that done. Now you're not going to go down on your back because we don't want you going on the floor if you're not ready for it. So why not just do some sort of hip move that helps loosen and strengthen your hips for better balance? Maybe swing your leg across. One, two. They only said to do two, but if you can do this, maybe you want to do four because it's not quite as challenging as the gold standard move. Take the other leg. One, two, three, four. Do you think that move might come into play if you fell? Do you think maybe you'd be torqued, your body might twist a little bit? I think so. So rehearsing those things, telling your body to be prepared when the worst does happen could save your life. That's where I think the study has real merit. Okay? So that is a beginner doing the move. Now, it also says 30 seconds slow moving recovery. So I built that in there to make this a little bit of an exercise routine as well. You're going to move your body, and that's going to give you some metabolic benefits in terms of breaking down a little muscle, burn a few calories. But what we'll do is we'll just kind of march in place for 30 seconds in between each set. So we're going to get our body used to recovering while we move. Recovering while you move is one of the greatest things you can do. Because if you rest, you're telling your body it's got to always rest to recover. It's not true as long as you deal with it in a way that doesn't risk injury. So if this is making you breathe hard, then you go to this. And if that's making you breathe hard, maybe you just swing your arms. But you just move a little bit for 30 seconds. Okay, let's say it's 29, 30. Now let's do an intermediate set. Okay, so our, they asked for five low intensity intervals. So we did one. So now we'll do the intermediate set. We're going to cross our legs. We're going to drop down. One, up, two, up. And then we're going to cross our feet the other way. One, up, two, up. Okay, then we're going to do an intermediate gold standard move. You can either use the chair if you don't want to get on the ground, or maybe you just do something like this. Get down, let your sweet feet swing up like that. Maybe that's as far as you can go. That's one. You don't even have to stand up again. And two. Okay. That would be an intermediate level of circuit. Now, we've got to move for 30 seconds between those sets. So maybe that's a light jog. Maybe it's a march if you're just not ready for jogging. Okay, but I'm using my arms, I'm using my heart, I'm using all kinds of great stuff, right? Okay, and then on the advanced, and again, just want to get the best you can. 
Try, you know, try to put a little speed behind it. You do want to focus on form. It's important. So make sure I'm not going to hit the back there. So you come down. One. Okay. And down. Up. Down. Up. Then you would cross feet and do the other side, which I'll skip for the moment. Then we need to do two, two gold standard moves. You drop back. Go over and up. Drop back. Over and up. Okay, and now you're going to jog in place for real. If I'm doing this workout, this is what I look like. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and keep moving. And by the time I'm on that fifth interval, it's a nice little workout. I feel it, no question about it. But I've worked a ton of flexibility issues. I've prepared my body for impact on a fall. Best news of all, I've made it less likely it's going to fall. And that's what the SRT is all about. So again, go with the root of being cynical. I don't need this, I can't do it, so I'm not even going to try, it's too hard. Or you can say, I'll just do what I can do and build. Again, you'd want to develop the ability to see how far you can get in five years. Because what, what does that mean? By taking it easy, go easy, for five years, you've stayed with exercise for five years. Most people never do. That's the difference in the power of using exercise as a progressive approach instead of demanding perfection from day one, leading to all kinds of problems. So. That's days one and four. And there's a little pictorial evidence of how it looks. You saw it live. OK, now let's talk about days two, three, five, and six. There's a lot of other moves that can really help you okay, with injury prevention. You don't need to do that one every day. And in fact, I don't recommend it. You want to let your body recover. It's using different muscles. There's other exercises I'm sure you'd prefer to do from time to time. So two, three, five, and six, if this is going to be your exercise routine, you can use the 10 eat bullet injury bulletproof moves. Okay? These are various moves that I've determined through my experience with clients and myself and coaching as athletes, etc., that you will dramatically reduce your risk of injury if you perform these on a routine basis. Now, what's going to be interesting is I've never done this routine before because it's built into my other exercise plans. So, my jump rope routine or my, you know, strength circuit